Hey everyone, welcome back if you're returning and welcome if you're new. It's been about a month since I gave my last update on my 2014 Honda Accord EXL V6, affectionately known as Bobby the Nitrogen Accord. Uh, the wind is blowing pretty strongly, so hopefully the microphone does what it's supposed to do. All of the updates that I give today are cosmetic for the most part. There is one, I guess, thing that you could consider mechanical or electric, but I'll get there when I get there. I'm going to start my way at the front and work my way around. And we'll cover everything that I've done within the past few weeks or so. All right, starting with the front of the car. Uh, I'm going to work my way through everything that's there that I've added since the car was purchased. So my first modification to the front end aesthetic, obviously, was replacing the OEM grille with this OEM style uh, HFP grille. When the car was brand new, you could have gotten uh, one of two HFP grilles as an accessory, either one that was all black, like mine, or one that was chrome but in the same style as the one I have. Uh, clearly you can see which one I opted for and I'm pretty happy with that decision. Next would be the uh, license plate, JDM style license plate. It's like a replica that I ordered off of Amazon. I had one on my former 1998 Accord as well. Um, J35, clearly the car is powered by J35 Y1, 3.5 liter V6, all of that stuff. Uh, name of the car, it's Bobby, year 14 and then the caricatures or symbols. And then most recently I ordered a um, new badge, I guess you could say. At first I was thinking about going for the red, you know, type R style on the emblem. Decided against that. It's something that everyone does and kind of wanted to be a little bit different with this one. Um, and plus, I don't really think red would have looked very good on this particular color. Neither here nor there. I went with this one that I found. A friend actually sent me a page on Instagram of a guy who makes custom emblems for Hondas, Subarus, Nissans, Acuras, etc. Um, and this design was the one that caught my eye at first. So here it is. I'll leave the information for his Instagram page inside of uh, the description. Shipping wasn't that bad. And he does pretty high quality work. So there's that. And there's one in the back as well. And the one thing that I love is that these are specifically measured to be uh, the exact size of your car. So highly recommend that. And I'll leave the information in the description. While I'm up here, kind of sad to report that my headlight lenses are starting to fade um, pretty quickly, honestly. When I got this car in May of last year, um, they were pretty clear. I gave it mm, six or so months and then they started to yellow and fade. And I'm kind of back at that point again. So there's that. Will I replace them? I really don't know. But I can't say if I will. It won't be anytime soon. Moving to the side of the car. We'll start off with the wheels, tires, and brake calipers. My luck with tires on this car has been somewhat spotty. Um, at some point between getting the car and now, both of the rear tires uh, have blown at some point. Uh, so those have been replaced and that leaves me running on mismatched tires. But it is what it is. All of them have really good tread life left. At some point, I'll get new wheels for the car, and then clearly I'll get new tires as well then. Um, and I'll most likely end up working my way up to 18 or 19 inch um, Honda wheels from something or another. We'll get them when we get there though. Moving on to the wheels and calipers. I painted the wheels and calipers myself. Um, I tried my best to do things the right way. So sanding, primer, multiple coats, all of that stuff took me a good uh, eight or nine hours to make sure the job was done correctly. And I'm pretty satisfied with the way they came out. Um, it's a black rust-oleum and then I use the uh, gloss as well, the gloss clear coat that you can get to go over it. Um, and then the calipers uh, painted with rust-oleum as well, kind of like a teal or turquoise color, somewhere along those lines. Um, again, I'm pretty satisfied with the way that came out. It was a pretty tedious process, but I wanted to make sure that it was done right and I also wanted to do it myself. Um, I'm the first person to admit that I'm not the most mechanically inclined. I leave that to the professionals. My car is always serviced by either the dealer or a local Honda specialist. Um, with that, I handle all of the cosmetic things. Next thing on the side of the car is going to be these carbon fiber door handle covers. Typically, I'm not a fan of chrome door handles at all. On this car, it kind of matched the whole, I guess, luxury appeal of the 9th Gen Accord. But with me going for a look that was more sporty, I wanted to change that up. So I found these carbon fiber um, covers on eBay. Now, I'm not the one to say that they're real or fake or whatever. Um, if I had to guess, um, chances are they're fake. I'm fine with it. Um, it's for cosmetics. And honestly, that's not a... The piece is functional, but not functional to the point that I'm going to spend 
hundreds of dollars on you know door handle covers so there's that something else to mention uh, on the side or make the argument that it's on the rear as well is this rear window visor um or spoiler however you want to put it i kind of second guessed that at first i will say after it being on for nearly a month i kind of like it um it's really subtle i wanted to make sure that it wasn't one of the huge ones um that draw too much attention um so i'm pretty happy with it clearly the car has had the jdm style quote unquote uh window visors for probably close to a year if not a year already um and then that's my same sunroof visor that I've had since I had my 2004 Honda Accord. All right, around the back, uh, again, the chrome in the car, yeah, in certain places is fine. I'm not going to change it, but uh, certain areas I wanted to make sure that it was addressed. So you can see I replaced, or not replaced, I covered up that chrome uh, strip on the trunk and this carbon fiber piece as well. Um, I do wish that the carbon fiber material was a bit more glossy. Um, it's kind of like a flat a flatter color if, if you will um but i'm happy with the way it looks for the most part and then again i have my uh, custom badge that i ordered from the source that will be left in the description as well then besides that everything back here is still the same uh rear oem spoiler third brake light iv tech badge that i added again well over a year ago at this point um some stickers Two stickers came with the emblems that I ordered. Um, so one of them is right there. Pretty nice. You can check that out. Um, the guy's name on Instagram is Fusion Auto Concept. So check them out if you're in need of anything like that. Um, pretty good array of things. So again, check it out. And clearly I'm a teacher, as I mentioned a few times before. So you take that sticker to mean whatever you want it to mean. And we won't spend too much time over here because it's the exact same as the other side, obviously. The only asymmetrical piece on the passenger side of these cars is the lane watch on the EX trim and above. And then here was the other sticker that came with the emblems. All right, that pretty much covers it for aesthetics. Um, I did have a Cobra uh, hood bra installed. I'm going to be honest, I really thought I would love the way it looked, so I spent $80 getting it here waited about two weeks in order for it to arrive and i'm sad to say i wasn't really a fan i took it off literally five minutes before recording this video um not my thing i'll probably end up listing it for sale on one of the nitrogen accord classified groups or you might put it on here who knows um i just really wasn't a fan um it's not ugly necessary necessarily um the quality is really good I definitely recommend it for anyone who's interested in a hood bra, but it ultimately wasn't my thing. I will include a picture of how it looks on the video as well, though. Again, that pretty much covers it for aesthetics, so we'll just get one more shot of it. I can say this is probably my favorite angle of the car. This car is really big. Um, I nicknamed it my big body Benz. Clearly, my car isn't anywhere near as powerful as a Mercedes Benz or as luxurious, but you get the point. Um, with that being said, getting the perfect angle for it is sometimes hard when you're trying to take some good pictures. But I can see this one is probably my favorite. The rear end, it's not as bad as the pre-refreshed 7th generation Accord. But I will say, I think I prefer the rear end of the 16 to 17 9th gen Accord. Nonetheless, I still like mine. It's not that bad. And then the one mechanical or electrical thing that I wanted to mention is actually under the hood. Um, I mentioned this in my last video that I recorded. Um, but just never really took a look at it. I did the VCM delete on my car. Um, essentially, if you don't know what VCM is, it's variable cylinder management. On Honda's V6s, it automatically cuts off two of the cylinders in order to preserve fuel. Not my favorite feature at all. If it was more seamless and unnoticeable, maybe so, but it's not. So I disabled it as many people have done on, you know, Accords with V6s, Pilots, Odysseys, Ridgelines, MDXs, etc. I'm going to remove my engine cover so you can get a closer look at how it looks under there, and then we'll wrap it up. So there's that J35Y1 in all its glory, all uncovered. Pretty dusty under there. The car is getting, you know, up in age, so, so that's to be expected. Um, I guess you won't be able to see the VCM module too much, but essentially it runs from the positive battery terminal um, over to one of the sensors. I think it's a coolant sensor. Uh, let's see if I can find it very quickly. Right 
there. Don't know how well you can see that, but there is where it's connected. Um, the very simple process it took me no more than 10 minutes to get it all installed. And so far, cross my fingers when I say this, it has worked perfectly. Um, of course, there's going to be some noticeable loss in fuel economy, but I'm going to be honest, I'm willing to sacrifice the, you know, four to five MPG um, that I lose if it's going to mean I have a more responsive engine. And the VCM made the car feel like it had 200 horsepower um, as opposed to 270. So happy with that decision. And I recommend it to anyone else who owns a Honda with a V6. And while we're at the hood, I'll also go ahead and mention um, reliability for this car. I'm going to cross my fingers again while saying this, but so far this car has been absolutely bulletproof. Um, there's a reason I opted to get the V6. There are a couple reasons, actually. First, the four cylinders. If you opted for the automatic, they came with a CVT. Test drove one. Can't really handle the CVT, so here I am. Um, ideally, as much as I love my V6, I would have been perfectly fine if I found a, a 2013 to 2017 Accord EX with the four cylinder and the six speed manual. Um, those are somewhat hard to come by. Um, after I bought this car, of course, they started popping up um, closer to me. But I love my car. There's no getting rid of it for me at this point. Um, and it's been bulletproof again. Um, the J35 has been in production for years and years and years and years now. Um, clearly, this is a newer iteration of it, relatively speaking. Um, but it's still a pretty old school design. You know, single overhead cam, uh, timing belt operated, so on and so forth. But I love it. Wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, my only complaint and my only gripe is that they didn't offer the Nightchen V6 sedan or Ford model with a 6B manual. Again, it's a family sedan. I don't fault them for not offering it at all. No one was going to buy it. Um, and Honda, at the end of the day, is a corporation and a business, and they have to consider what's going to be most profitable. Um, I do wish, however, as much as I give them credit, wouldn't have been too difficult or too much to ask for them to put paddle shifters on the V6 sedan. If a Honda Pilot and a Honda Odyssey can get paddle shifters, I really do think the Accord V6 deserve them. But nonetheless, I'm not going to harp on my car too much or the brand that I love too much because clearly I'm here for a reason and I buy the cars for a reason. So there's that. But I'm going to wrap it up here. We're not going to do any driving in this video. Nothing has changed in terms of the, in terms of the way the car drives. It's still phenomenal. It just came back from a six and a half hour uh, road trip to uh, Tampa, Florida, uh, from my home in South Carolina. I uh, held up perfectly. It's taken quite a few road trips in my, you know, just over a year of ownership. Um, and again, it's been perfect all along. Um, it's going to get us somewhat of a break. There won't be too many road trips for it coming up soon because I'm putting a lot of miles on it. Uh, when I bought it, it had just under 100,000 miles on it. And right now, it's gotten all the way up to 122,000. So I'm going to take it easy on her. If I do take any more road trips, I'll rent something um, or just catch a flight. I'm going to wrap it up here. I appreciate you for watching. Uh, please leave your feedback, uh, positive, negative, constructive, so on and so forth. And I'll appreciate it either way. Thanks for watching. See you the next time. Very quickly, this car is babied, so very rarely does it get into VTEC, but for the sake of the video, um, before we wrap up, I would do a quick little acceleration and try to go into VTEC. Really quickly, one other modification to show off would be uh, switching over all of the interior lights, including uh, door light, map lights, doom light, and then all of the trunk and license plate lights as well. Those have all now been switched to LEDs. One thing that I will say Honda kind of started to cheap out on was putting uh, door lights in the rear seats as well, at least on the Accord. I can't really speak for any other vehicle. Um, but on my 1998, um, as old as that car was, um, since it was the fully loaded model, it had uh, lights and the rear doors as well. Something that I wish they would have continued with.